I wanted to show you three excellent Remington pump shotguns. Everybody knows the 870. I wanted to do it, probably make this video for a couple of years, but I, I never had the three shotguns that I wanted. Um, this is, this is the Model 10, even though I'm not positive about that because I can't, I get up way up here in the mountains and I think, well, I've got all these guns to film and it'll say the model on it somewhere, but it doesn't. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's a Model 10. We looked at one before, uh, that one uh, stopped working. And so I, I was lucky and found this one in really good shape. It's a takedown model. And I believe it might have been John Pedersen that designed it, but don't quote me. Uh, all I know is it's an excellent, of the three, uh, of course the 870 is, is the best, but I like this model a lot. And actually was just shooting, it shoots quite well. Some really carefully made parts, you can see the takedown device. So that just pops, pops in and out and then um, the barrel is very easy to remove. Uh, the action has only one slide bar. You can see it says Remington on the slide bar. And I thought for sure maybe on the slide bar or on the barrel, there's some markings, but I have no idea how this uh, focus thing works on the camera. It's sitting on a tripod today. Anyhow, that's the Model 10 and the, the release for the action is this button here. Uh, it could be bigger. On the other hand, uh, it, it works quite well. And one of the cutest features on this gun is the lifter is, it, it's a, it's, it's kind of a, kind of a flapper for lack of a better word. You can see how it works. Anyhow, uh, this action, this is slightly loose, but it's not a big deal to tighten those up. The action is short. Some ways reminds me of an Ithaca. Uh, but anyway, we'll take some, some shots. That's the safety in the trigger guard. You know, some people write me about that and that's maybe questionable to have it exactly there. So, but it, that's, that's the way it's made. And somebody went to town with this recoil pad. I guess maybe, a, you know, a person with long arms, but uh, I seem to shoot it well. Got a Prince of Wales grip. So that's another nice feature I like. There's no, there's no cross hatching on the barrel. And it's a typical 30 inch full. In the old days, when you bought a pump shotgun, most of the time, it was 28 or 30 inch full. And the odd time somebody would order a modified or a improved cylinder. But this one is a full choke. And what we'll do is just, just take a shot with it. Um, we don't usually do that kind of thing, uh, but it's fun to try. So yeah, I just close the action. I'll feed around into the magazine and then get the clay pigeon thrower going and, and uh, take a shot. Then we'll look at the Model 31 and then the 870. And I tried to get models that are similar, no vent ribs, so that you can kind of see the evolution of, of Remington pump action shotguns. All right, I'll head over there and take a shot. Anytime. Here's the second uh, gem of a Remington pump action. It's the Model 31. This was the big delay I could I could find Model 10s, uh, but I couldn't find a decent Model 31. So here it is, and maybe familiar to some of you. It was not that familiar to me. I think this is the deluxe model. 
and it has some, you know, decent checkering on the pistol grip and fore end. And this one nobody cut, which is kind of always a nice feature. The action may remind you of the J.C. Higgins, just the way the bolt looks. Um, but again, I didn't study the internals. These are all kind of interrelated, most of the shotguns. It may also remind you, a lot of people see them, uh, especially from the bottom, and they kind of think it's an Ithaca 37. Of course, the side ejection um, tells you a different story. It's a takedown, has a knurled knob up front. Very easy to take down, and this one this one's lasted all the years and it's a tight 12 gauge, full choke, the usual story. I think I showed you the, the Model 31 designation already, but just in case. The lifter um, is different from the 10. You can see it's a more conventional, familiar design moving toward the 870 which we'll look at next. Um, anyway, I mean, I these are all extremely reliable. And in my younger years where I used to spend more time in the marshes, I, I, I would run into hunters using these, um, you, you know, all the time. That was the, the, I didn't see, of course, back then, uh, super black eagles and, you know, all of the modern semi-autos. The odd Browning Auto 5, uh, but not that often. Oh, it also only has one action slide bar. Um, we'll take a look at a Mossberg. I brought one along, a Mossberg 500, which is just a superb pump action. Anyway, we'll we'll take a shot with with the uh, with the 31 and see how it goes. Beautiful. Last but not least, the uh, Remington 870. What hasn't been said about the, this pump action? Just phenomenal. I won't even talk about it much, except to say that this model, which I think I looked it up, it's from the late 60s, is probably my favorite. And, you know, of the collectors that I know, they always look for these. It's not that newer ones are better or worse, I don't think. Or maybe some of the most recent ones are lacking, according to some people. But I just like the way these late 60s, 70s Wingmasters run. They're very slick. All the controls are quite familiar. You know the lifter. You know the bolt. Um, they virtually... Some of them never stop working. Thousands and tens of thousands of rounds. Once again, this one's two and three quarter inch or shorter shells, full choke. And I'll turn the receiver around. You can see Wingmaster 870. And I should probably know the years by heart, but uh, I don't. When the 10 started and finished, when the 31 started and finished and so on. Uh, but this is the one I think that a lot of people look for. So once again, we'll take a shot that somebody put actually quite a decent uh, recoil pad. It's got a bit of a curvature to it, so it cracked. Anyway, you'll see all kinds of things that I'm sure you're familiar with. Nothing wrong with this. It's completely serviceable. And we'll take a, a shot and see how the 870 runs. Here's another shotgun that took me a actually a long time to find. Uh, one of my favorites, I'm sure one of your favorites too, Mossberg 500. Another unstoppable shotgun, like the Remington 870, to an action sidebars. Um, the receiver is aluminum, um, and when it came out, some people made some remarks about that, but 
seems to make no difference to the Mossberg. This is the model that I wanted with the walnut stock and the original Mossberg recoil pad. Uh, nobody cut it. It still is a decent looking shotgun. I'm sure this was made 20 or 30 years ago. The action is quite familiar to um, sort of echoes of the of the J.C. Higgins Model 20. And I was very lucky with this one because it's a 28 inch barrel, 12 gauge of course, and it's a modified choke. And so I, generally speaking, I find the modified choke to be uh, the most useful, but that's just me. Anyhow, I think this one is um, three inch. Yeah, it's 12 gauge, three inch, 28 inch barrel modified choke. It's just about ideal. These never jam. And they've made so many models now, some are mill spec. We'll take a quick shot or two, but there's nothing that hasn't been written or filmed or, or said about the Mossberg 500. One of the most excellent shotguns you can buy, and I ran into them all the time, um, almost everywhere I went. And there are slug models, and you can buy barrels from Hastings and, and other makers, and actually Mossberg Somehow Mossberg made the slug barrel for my Remington 870. I just read that the other day on the barrel. All right, we'll take a shot now. We decided to shoot a little segment in the studio with the four shotguns that we were shooting in the mountains. Um, well, partly so you can see them a little better with the studio lights and so on. And also, you know, usually I don't, I, there are some things that, uh, that I say that don't make any sense. And that could happen again here, but um, I thought I'll show you the, the four and then you can see them more clearly, like I said. and. Also, I've discovered a couple of things. One is I can't believe in the earlier part of the video that somehow I thought the Mossberg 500 was a dual action slide bar. And I mean, I've had these shotguns before. So anyway, this particular one, I mean, you'll see the footage. I look at it and I must somehow have persuaded myself that, that there were two action slide bars, but there's only one. And in fact, this model says Mossberg made in USA, North Haven, Connecticut, 12 gauge. I can't find model 500 on it, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Maybe it's an early model or maybe it's a model, you know, sold by Sears or somebody like that. But um, you, you'll recognize the profile and the action. And I guess one of the nicest things that people uh, write me about is that when you, you know, when you have a, um, channel like this one you can see the guns together so if you kind of capture a mental image of that of that bolt um, the operation is completely familiar to any one of you i think this is a takedown i i think you just spin this and this narrow knob and then the barrel comes out uh, should be pretty straightforward the bolt release here on the bottom of the action so you can open the bolt without dry firing and we looked at the follower in the mountains as well we looked at the bolt in the mountains but um, yeah I mean it looks a lot like frankly the model 31 and the JC Higgins um, that I don't have uh, anymore so I can't show it to you also too many uh, guns on the table so that's the Mossberg 500 which really isn't the main subject the main subject is Remington shotguns so uh, may as well start with the, the earliest one and you'll hear here in the first part of the video I mentioned that I think this is a John Pedersen uh, design and probably some of you know of John Pedersen he's one of those brilliant designers I think actually John Browning said that Pedersen was like as good as it gets for gun design uh, did a whole bunch of pump action rifles, all kinds of guns actually, including the Pedersen device for the 1903 Springfield, which is a very unique adaptation. If you know the 03, it's a 30 six, 
and Pedersen created um, a bolt that turns it into essentially a pistol caliber shooting rifle. We can get into that another time. I don't have one of those around. And most of the Pedersen devices that changed the Springfield into a pistol cartridge rifle were destroyed for some complicated historical reason. But getting back to the Model 10, um, you know, it's again another all steel, beautiful shotgun. It's a very interesting um, receiver extension. I didn't take off the stock, although I guess I should have, but it, I mean, this, it extends through here and you would think generally that that weakens the stock. I'm always suspicious, but in this case, it's done very well. And as I pointed out um, in the earlier part of the video, it's a single action slide bar. You can see it here. And to release the action, you push down this button, which we also talked about earlier. So then the action opens. And here's the lifter flapper that, that I mentioned as well. Um, this is one of those shotguns you know i looked at that at it a little bit more i haven't had much time lately but when you get into the design you can see whoever thought this through with no like autocad or anything no computer assisted design it's obviously a highly intelligent uh person um like most of you anyhow um yeah so that's how this puppy works and then uh, what did I want to show you? Oh, I keep saying how easy it is to take this down. So I don't know if it's that easy, but it, you push this button and you can see by pushing this button, it kind of automatically starts tipping this, what to call it, lever. And then the only things you have to do is make sure the action is open and, and then um, pull the slide forward. Uh, we have you know, not the best camera, hoping to upgrade one of these days. And that means that this action slide bar is now free of the action because we couldn't turn this. So you'll see how this goes. And then you rotate this part, which is quite easy. And then you can rotate the works. And there's an interrupted thread design, much like a Winchester. And that is the fantastic uh, Remington Model 10, although it doesn't say Model 10 anywhere on this particular gun. Uh, reassembly is the reverse of that process, and I'll set that aside. Um, if you can ever find one of these, uh, we had great success. You know, we can't film everything we do, obviously, and then we edit out all my misses and mishaps, but um, great shotgun. I would buy another, actually, if I could find one with a more open choke. Next, Remington 31. Um, you, I mean, there are a lot of echoes of all kinds of designs um, in the 31, which is a lot like the 870. This is always tricky, um, but I think I can pull it off. Obviously, 870 above and 31 below. You can see the ejection port of the 31 is more squared off. Uh, actually, the more I looked at this 31, um, the more I liked it, even, even though I know the 870 must be the superior gun, but you'll see when I close the action, uh, I mean, doesn't it make you think of the Higgins and the Mossberg here in the, f in the foreground? Uh, I did tell you before the Mossberg has an aluminum receiver, um, which is fine. A anyway, the 31 is still all steel. The action release here in front of the trigger art on the right side. On the 870, it's on the left side. And I'll turn this around so you can see it. I don't know if we can focus. This is where the... It's, it's hard to focus in on things with... The equipment we have but the, this is a completely excellent shotgun and I'm still convinced that these changes that you see to firearms um, have little to do with the designs somehow being discovered to be faulty you know you put a gun into production 
most of the time I think you know that it works and it's going to work for a long time. It's simply profit margins and then uh, maybe sometimes misguided perception of what the public wants. But the 31 is excellent. I, 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 yeah, again, I'm going to keep an eye out for different models because now, now that I know how fine this shotgun is, I mean, this is um, one action bar. Uh, this is, I think, the deluxe model with some checkering and it's got the Remington butt plate. I always like that. I'm not a fussy collector. A lot of my friends are very, uh, but if somebody had cut this and put a recoil pad, no problem. Um, I, I quite often use these guns so I can understand the previous owner or owners wanted a little something softer on their shoulder. Uh, yeah, if you can find a 31, truly you can't go wrong. And I, I mean, I see all the machines and I like them, the modern, you know, semis, but I don't know, there's something about these. I'm, I'm not sure we've gained all that much, I'm just saying. 870, again, in the earlier segment, I talk about it more. This is an early model and, um, you know, rather than take more of your time, there's not that much that needs it. It has twin action bars, which prevents binding, even though I can't get any of the others to bind, but it must have theoretically happened. Also, it kind of acts as a carrier for the bolt. If you take these apart, you'll know what I mean. And um, I'll flip it around, you'll see Wingmaster on the on the action. Again, it's tricky. Sometimes I paint these things white because people say they can't see them, and I apologize for that. Like I said, we just really actually pull off this channel um, I don't know exactly how with the worst equipment. I'm trying to tip it. I'm guessing which way the light falls. I have no idea. And and then you can see the bottom of the action. Uh, so that's probably a fair review. And what I'm going to do just based on your uh, comments is uh, it is probably worth it for me to make a review of the pump actions that I have that are bottom eject because they're quite unique. You can see how compact the action is of the Pedersen. And we should look at the Ithaca 37 and we should look at the Browning uh, pump shotgun. Uh, the, you know, they're, they're all, they're, they're quite different. Uh, but compared to the 870, um, you know, it's a different scale. And yet this early shotgun uh, arguably does everything that the 870 does. This is an easy shotgun uh, to like a lot. This is, uh, this is something else. And I think I mentioned that it's a little bit loose in the barrel. And I was talking to a guy who collects these, a good friend, and he said, uh, there's no problem adjusting things so that it's, it's, it's tight as new. And I also noticed another thing on the 31, see these markings I think the same thing pertains to the 31 I think you can tighten up this action as well just superb shotguns and um, as I say often by now you know me I'm not sure the quality of the hunts that we go on for waterfowl or you know upland game is that much enhanced by the machines or the or the guns we use I actually think these are excellent. I like that Mossberg a lot. I think it's a f early model 500, but I like them all. There's, it would be cool to get a model 10, um, you know, in a skeet model, something like that. But these are all hard to find. There aren't that many collectors, but the ones that there are, they know, you know, like art, you know, Picasso and all that, they know the guns um, that are worth collecting and I think this is one of them these are extraordinary if you if you have time uh, once in a while they come up quite cheaply because people don't know what they are not not everybody's on this channel and if you can pick these up uh, just take them you'd be actually surprised how superior they really are anyway that's my humble opinion 
Thanks as always for watching and um, I hope you found this segment interesting. We'll do the bottom eject and actually this winter I was hoping to do a whole series on side-by-side -side shotguns and I've been carefully and, and patiently accumulating for that for that series. Um, all right, well, I guess that's about it. Take care, stay healthy. We'll see you next time.